Here's our second example of uh, a problem dealing with surface tension, and this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, let's call it the floating needle. And what is strange about surface tension is it appears that objects that are more dense on water can actually float on the surface of water, at least they appear to float, but really what's happening here is that the attractive forces of the water molecules allow very small objects that don't have a lot of mass be placed on top of the surface and the surface tension, which is caused by the mutual attraction of the water molecules, will actually uphold an object and it will not break through that water surface. And so, for example, a needle very carefully placed on top of some water, it can actually stay on top of the water. It will appear to indent the water a little bit, just kind of like that, and it will make what we call a contact angle between the surface of the needle and the surface of the water. So, the heavier the needle, the further it will sink into the water, the, the deeper that the impression or indentation of the water will be then the contact angle will become smaller and eventually at maximum strength of the surface tension this contact angle will go to zero. If then the object is any heavier it will simply break to the surface and sink to the bottom. So let's say in this example what is the maximum mass that this needle can have if we assume it to be five centimeters long placed on top of the surface of the water. Now of course we need to know the surface tension of water and let's say at 20 degrees so surface tension of H2O at 20 degrees is roughly, I believe, it's 72.8 dynes per centimeter. All right, we're told that the needle is five centimeters long, so let's go ahead and try to figure it out. Now the force caused by the surface tension is equal to the coefficient of the surface tension times the length along the edge of the object along which the surface tension acts. And notice again, we can see that this is going to happen on both sides. So if you want to think about it this way, so the angle should be the same on both sides. And the times the cosine of that contact angle, cosine of theta. Now, of course, you know that the surface tension will then equal the weight of the, um, of the object. And since we're looking for the maximum weight or the maximum mass, so mg is going to be equal to the coefficient times length times the cosine of theta. And of course, the cosine of theta is going to be 1 because the maximum or the, the maximum force will be uh, of the surface tension will be there when the contact angle goes to 0. And of course, the cosine of 0 is 1. So that means that m is therefore equal to the coefficient times L divided by G. Now remember, L is going to be the total length of the surface that is um, accounted for, that the, that the uh, liquid uh, touches the metal of the needle. So that's going to be twice the length of the needle. So we'll have to write that like that. So that means the total contact length, if you want to call it that, L is going to be twice the length of the needle. All right. And this, of course, simply does G. Let's plug in the numbers. And so this is equal to, if we convert that to newtons per meter, this would be equal to 0 0.0728 newtons per meter. So divided by 1,000 because it's divided by 100,000, but then times 100 to convert back to meters. And let's plug that in here. So we have 0 0.0728 newtons per meter for the coefficient. The length would be twice the 5 centimeters to the 0.05 meters and then divide the whole thing by 9.8 meters per second squared. <clears throat> of course, we could do this in CGS units as well, but typically nowadays most books only use the standard units, so we'll just go ahead and convert. So we have 0 0.0728 uh, times 2 times 0 0.05 and divide by 9.8 and that gives us the mass in kilograms. So this is equal to 7.4 times 10 to the minus 4 kilograms. And of course, convert to grams, that would be 0 0.74 grams. All right, so that's the heaviest needle that you can place on, on water, and it will still be upheld by the surface tension of the water. So a little bit less than 3 quarters of a gram, provided, of course, the needle is 5 centimeters long. For the second part of the question, we could say, okay, what would be the contact angle if the mass was only 0.5 grams, so less mass, that means we don't need to have a zero contact angle, a zero degrees contact angle. So for the second part of the problem, let me give myself some board space here. We use the same equation right here, but now we don't have zero for the, cos uh, for the angle. And so now we have mg 
is equal to gamma times L times the cosine of theta. So if you, that means the cosine of theta is equal to mg divided by gamma times L, which means theta is equal to the R cosine of mg divided by gamma times L. And remember, L is the total length between the liquid and the needle. That would be both sides of, of the needle. So this is equal to the R cosine. Uh, let's go like this. That's equal to the R cosine of mg divided by gamma times 2 times the length of the needle. Small l represents the length of the needle. Plug it in the numbers. It is equal to the R cosine of the mass, which we said was going to be half a gram, so 0 0.0005 kilograms uh, times g, that's 9.8 meters per second square. I'm going to leave the units off to make it a little cleaner. Gamma would still be 0 0.0728, and then times 2 times the length, um, that would be 5 centimeters, so 0 0.05, like so. And if we then take the R cosine of that, we should get the contact angle. So let's try that. So 0 0.0005, which is a half a gram, times 9.8, uh, divided by 0 0.0728 and divided by 2 and divided by 0.05. Now take the R cosine of that, and I get 47.7, let's call it 48 degrees. So we would have a contact angle of 48 degrees, not requiring the very small near zero degree contact angle to uphold that needle. So for a needle that is only a half a gram and five centimeters long, you'd have a contact angle of 48 degrees. For the maximum mass needle, equal to 0.74 grams, you'd have a contact angle of zero degrees, and that's the heaviest five centimeter needle the surface of the water could uphold before the needle would break through and no longer would be held up by the surface tension. So hopefully this is a good example for you to see how surface tension works.